My core everyday carry kit has remained more or less unchanged for the past three or four years because it works so well for me. But recently, Fred F9562 asked in the comment, if the Benchmade bailout didn't exist, which pocket knife would I pick? And it got me thinking, holy crap, what if nothing I've used for so many years in my EDC existed? An interesting challenge to take what I know works for me and share how to build a completely new everyday carry kit from the ground up. Kicking things off with the wallet, my rule for stuff that goes in my pocket is that it doesn't add a lot of bulk, so a slim wallet is a must. For the past few years, I've used the Bellroy card sleeve because it stores the seven cards I need with my most frequently used card in the front, the remaining six in the central pocket with this pull tab extractor, and some emergency cash in that rear pocket. And just look at how slim this entire setup is. But what if the Bellroy card sleeve was never created? I found this Carhartt zipper card keeper wallet. It's got six card sleeves plus this zippered pocket up top. So for my needs, almost all of my seven cards have a dedicated pocket and the two least used cards, my health card and business debit card, share this largest pocket on the back. That little bit of emergency cash I carry goes easily into the zipper pocket, but the zipper pocket is a great place to store other small flat objects. For example, a buddy of mine who just hit six years sober may choose to keep his sobriety coin in there. If you're a parent, few spare band-aids can definitely slide in there no problem as well. If you have been with me for a bit, you know I favor earth tones, but these Carhartt wallets are available in a bunch of different colors. And just like everything else in this video, I have linked it down in the description in case you want to check it out for yourself. Moving on to the key solution, my keychain has been the spec DNT that me and Eric make at the workshop. I just love the patinaed copper look, and although its original use case when we first designed it was to be a naturally antimicrobial button presser and door opener, today it really just acts as a finger fidget spinning toy that I think looks damn cool. I am, of course, very biased, so swapping it out for something I'd find compelling was definitely going to be a bit of a challenge. That said, I did come across this carabiner by Rovivon called the U4 Pro TI. Super lightweight yet strong from its titanium construction, I really like that the carabiner gate is quite narrow to mitigate accidental slipouts, while the hook portion is quite thin, enabling us to attach it to so many anchor points, even tiny ones like some zipper pulls or this tiny loop on that Carhartt wallet. This piece is also a multi-tool of sorts. Check it out, it's got this super sharp surgical scalpel that is replaceable with standard number 11 blades, as well as this dual T6 and T8 Torx driver bit that swings out. Truth be told, I really like the titanium frame and the design decisions made for the carabiner itself. So even without the blade and driver, I'd still feel great about choosing this U4 Pro TI for this challenge. By the way, the spec TNT typically falls into our one summer and one winter drop every year, but because they sold out in just one day last drop, me and Eric pumped out a small run this past week. So if you are interested, hurry and check them out linked down below. However, for now, it's time to move right on to the pocket knife. If you have been with me for a bit, you already know I've used a pocket knife frequently for both of my day jobs, and my workhorse for years has been the Benchmade M4 bailout. For my use cases, especially at the workshop, a Tonto blade is a must, whether it's stabbing through thicker rubber materials or light prying applications. Characteristics of the bailout I need to emulate? Again, Tonto blade, definitely. For a true daily use workhorse, I personally prefer metal scales for just some, at least how I perceive it, added durability and resilience. And as an added bonus, I much prefer a deep carry clip. As for blade steel, although I absolutely love the M4 and it continues to serve me so well, it is quite prone to corrosion and takes a long time to sharpen. So what's the replacement if the Benchmade bailout didn't exist? After all, that was Fred F9562's original question. And if I were to give a knee-jerk response, I would probably say something like the Chris Reeves Sabenza, with my must-have Tonto blade made from a pretty great S35 VN steel. But check it out, and I think this is important, especially when thinking about real-world use. By nature of being in a workshop setting and constantly meeting other people in the manufacturing space, it's inevitable that we talk tools and do random pocket dumps. And one thing that surprised me over the years is just how many people I meet who use the much more budget-friendly D2 blade steel in their true daily workhorse EDC knives. Knife YouTube can debate blade steels to hell and back, but the proof's in the pudding, and I have met a ton of real human beings who work in various hard-use trades that have no qualms whatsoever with D2, and it can save a bunch of money, so I'm definitely down to give it a shot in this challenge. For this experimental dive, I'm going to try this particular Civivi Elementum. The D2 blade is indeed a Tonto. With the hand-rubbed brass scales, it hits my requirement of a metal construction, and my last bonus, it's outfitted with a deep carry clip from the factory. 
Unlike the bailout's thumb stud, this uses a fidgety flipper tab to deploy, and unlike the Benchmate's axis lock, we've got a liner lock over here on the Elementum. And hey, at about five times less in terms of price, definitely worth a shot. Sliding over to the flashlight, my go-to for the past few years has been the Nightcore TUP-1000. I think it's important to point out that this is my everyday carry flashlight. For work, I obviously need something more robust, and at the workshop, I have favored the Olight Warrior Mini 2. But for daily use, this TUP has been fantastic. I used to think it was so gimmicky, but the mini display that lets me see exactly how much illumination I have left at every output is perfect for EDC since I don't charge it every day or even every week. So what are my core requirements in an EDC flashlight? First, it's got to be compact in size with some sort of anchor point for a keychain or small carabiner. Next, since I always wear a hat, it needs a dual clip or a beam up carry clip so I can mount it to the brim of my baseball cap for hands-free illumination if need be. Three, I need that level of confidence that I roughly know how much juice it has. And lastly, in terms of output, I don't need a ton for EDC tasks. I mean, even two or 300 lumens is plenty for me and certainly for most people's random impromptu use cases. Again, this is for EDC. I'm not talking about work or camping here. For this challenge, I am opting here for the Rovivon E3 Plus, or what I have here, the E4 Titanium. It hits all my needs as I mentioned earlier. Super compact, even thinner than the TUP-1000. It has an anchor point, it's got a reversible clip for attaching to my cap, and peaks at 700 lumens, way more than I or virtually anyone would need from a casual, non-work-related torch. The only thing that's missing is that element that lets me know exactly how much juice I have left. But where it lacks in a screen or remaining charge bars, it has this flip-out AAA battery slot to store a backup power source on a completely separate circuit. That means even if the built-in lithium battery runs out of charge, I've still got some light. And beyond that, AAA batteries are available anywhere, so in a real pinch, a gas station or 24-hour convenience store has got me covered. Heading over to the wristwatch, for 6 or 7 years, the watch that's had the most wrist time is the Seiko SKX007. If you've been with me for a bit, you know I love earth tones, and this experimental kit is lacking some green, so I'm going to swap out the SKX for the SSA 405J1, colloquially known as the Alpinist. That green somber style with the pops of gold on the numbers and applied indices, combined with those cathedral hands, just all come together into such a great package for me, and as I've gotten older, I've also started sort of preferring smaller case-sized watches, and this piece being 2mm smaller than that SKX does fit and hit different. Finally, we make it to the money makers, my notebook and pens. I have mentioned this time and time again, but this traveler's notebook in regular size and my two Lamy Safaris are literally the most important tools I own in terms of earning a living, and it doesn't even come close. I mean, worst case, I can outsource to other local shops for manufacturing, I can outsource to freelance videographers and editors for client videos, but these right here are the set of tools I use in sales and discovery meetings to really break down client and prospect challenges and work out how to solve them in an iterative and intuitive way, which ultimately enables me to actually bring money in in the first place. My must-haves for my notebook and pens kit are one, that the notebook refills have a small page count. This eliminates usage anxiety and, just as importantly, allows me to use separate notebooks for individual client projects without waste. Two, the system needs to be able to separate and organize at least two notebook inserts at a time. One of them for my own notes, goals, and task tracking, and the other for specific projects that are being worked on. Three, I need two different colored pens, since, as you saw with workflow diagrams and even general discovery note-taking, different colors help me emphasize different types of information, so it's easy for me to assess and tweak when I review and continue working away. Four, it needs to be able to store everything together in one package, so there's no need for an extra pencil case. Like with my long time setup, I use this Superior Labor dual pen clip to attach my Lamy Safaris to the Traveler's Notebook. So what's the setup I chose for this challenge, imagining my Traveler's Company didn't even exist? I have opted for the Pocket Journal by Lockbee, along with the Titanium Bolt Action Pen by Tactile Turn, and this Chubby Brass Mechanical Pencil by Koweko. Both of them slide directly into the integrated sleeve pockets on the waxed canvas shell, which is great. As for my other requirements in a notebook system, it does, indeed, store two low page count notebooks. And, in fact, Lockbee's own notebooks are the same size as field notes, so if you prefer field notes or have a bunch lying around, you can use a Lockbee shell with them as well. As you saw, when it comes to building an EDC that works for you and only you, reflecting on the things you need to do every day and, more importantly, 
how you as an individual prefer to do those things is the most critical consideration. My try, tested and true EEC kit is going to remain unchanged because it still works perfectly for me. But this was a very interesting exercise to think through, so thank you FredF9562 for sparking this video. All of my EDC choices get a lot more context in this video right over here, and if you're feeling lucky, you'll definitely want to check out this video down here. I'll leave them on screen for a few seconds so you have time to choose which one to watch next, but while you're deciding, consider liking, subscribing, and hitting that bell so you'll be notified the moment new videos just like this one drop.